government is crying after watching this this resignation speech by Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. Assalamualaikum and a very good evening. I bid our beloved lecturer, Professor Dr. Mwati and my fellow classmates. So for today, I'm going to present a topic entitled Patos. So basically, this is the content of my speech today. So this is just an overview I'd like to show to all of you. So first of all, we need to understand what this public speaking is all about. Right? So according to Vedeva Selnau and Vedeva 2011, public speaking is actually a continued formal speech by a speaker to a crowd of people. So there, there are three main elements that we need to know in public speaking. We have a speech, we have a speaker, and we have a crowd of people. So these three main elements that make up uh, public speaking. So, it is not necessarily for you to be a politician to give public speaking. As long as you have these three main elements, you can do public speaking at any time, anywhere. Next, there are three pillars of public speaking that all of us need to know. The first one is ethos, second one is logos, and third one is pathos. So, as ethos and logos, and some pathos have been explained by my fellow classmates, so for today, I'm going to give you a further explanation on what is pathos is all about, right? So, what is pathos? According to AHO 1985, this one, pathos refers to the audience feelings and for really and rely for persuasive effects on triggering audience emotions such as happiness, sadness, satisfaction, pity, or fear. And one another definition by Derry Dogan 2010, pathos is an emotional appeal and involves putting the audience into a certain frame of mind. So based on these two definitions, we can see that both definitions talk about emotion, on how actually pathos being used in a speech, in a speech to appeal to the emotion. Okay? okay. So Next, we need to understand what is the purpose of pathos. How we can use pathos in, this, for example, in speech, right? So, actually, the purpose of pathos is to sway an audience's emotion and manipulate the emotion rather than use the valid logic to win an argument or to persuade people. So, it's all about emotion on how the speaker will use emotion to persuade the, the audiences or maybe to win an argument, for example. So, that's how we will use pathos. Some speakers, they will use facts and logic and whatnot. But for when we are talk about pathos, it's all about emotion, on how we want to appeal to emotion of the audience to be, in our, to be on our side, right? So I will show you some examples. So this is the first example from Sharon Hines. So in his TED talk, entitled Talks on Humanity, Fame and Love, I will show you on how Sharon Hines actually used humor to engage with the audience. I've also been made to understand that lots of you here who haven't seen my work, and I feel really sad for you. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, Sharohan used this kind of humor in the beginning of his speech to attract the attention of the audience. So by doing so, it will make the audience to feel happy, to feel relaxed, to feel enjoyable towards his speech. So he will persuade the audience to listen more to about his speech, right? Yes. Another major example. Does anyone of you know who is this? Yes. Yes. Who is that, Alia? Uh, <laughs> yes, correct. From Indonesia. <laughs> she is actually Tri Risma Harini, the mayor of Surabaya. And in 2014, she's being awarded a third place in the whole world as the best city mayor in the world. This is because due to her contribution towards Surabaya, from just a normal town in Indonesia, 
to become one of the best town in Indonesia. Okay, this is because all of because of her speech. Let's see one of the examples. <laughs> Can you see how actually Tree is Marini used emotion in her speech? Right? So, okay, I'd like to ask one question, Mr. Makoto. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Makoto, do you understand the language? No. You don't understand. That is Indonesian language. But can you feel the emotion that she's trying to give towards the audience? Yes. Right? So, that shows how powerful pathos can be. Even though Mr. Makoto do not understand a single language from Indonesian language, but he can feel that Tree Maharini is get is mad, okay? Okay. Even though pathos is such a powerful tool that we can use in public speaking, for example, there are some inappropriate uses of manipulative of pathos that all of us need to know and be aware about this, right? So the first one is lying. Some people they will try to lie by by using emotion, appealing to the emotion, but she's he or she telling the lie, so it's not a, appropriate, right? It's not good, but some people who believe to the emotion that he or she gave to the audience will tend to believe on what he or she will say. Okay? The next one is denial. When, when we talk about denial, some people will deny the problems or the, uh, the problem, for example, that he or she already made. So, by using some kind of emotion, maybe she's crying and whatnot. She wants to deny that she is not the one should be put the blame. Okay? Some people as well will tend to believe that he or she is not the, the real victim. Okay? Next is shaming. Some people will use shaming, for example, in making love. The recent example I can show to you is, I can told I can tell you is, do you remember Mark Adam in I think Big Stage where she made body shaming towards Sherry Al Haddad. Yes. Yeah. Even it's in public. Okay. Mark Adam actually tend to make a funny stuff, but it's not funny. It's a shaming. Okay. So this is a kind of pathos that being used by Mark Adam. Next is play victim. Play victim. Some people they already do something wrong, but they don't want to admit. They put the blame on other person. For example, okay. Let's say I am uh, the management. Okay. So, okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm so sorry. I have. You know, to let you out, I have to terminate all of you from this company. I cannot pay all of your salaries. This is because of the previous management. This is not my fault. So please believe me. So that is one example of the victim. Okay, next is seduction. Does anyone know what is seduction? Yes. An act of seducing. Yeah. Okay. Maybe some of you do not have a clear image what is seduction. It's okay. I will show to you today. Okay, so I'll give you a situation. Okay, so the situation is all of us in a town hall meeting, and then I will be dating Viva Jusof. Okay, so I am the founder of Chicken Scarf. Okay, so let's imagine we are in a meeting. Okay. Wait, I wait. I need to get my stuff first. I need to come from the. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh. Good morning, guys. Yeah. How are you today? Good. Okay. Are you great? Good. Yeah. Yeah, so for today, we're having our town hall meeting for the first time ever. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's start. Oh my god. Oh my god. What? I left my pen dry. Wait, wait, okay. Oh, can somebody help me? Mm. You, the handsome guy there. The white shirt. <laughs> come here, did they know new employee, right? Come here, come here. Come here, please. Please come here. Can you help me? Oh, so handsome. <laughs> Can you help me to get the pen right? 
Where's your pen drive? In my office lah. Where's your office? There! Okay. Okay, thank you. Alright, thank you. Okay, now can you see that on how that it Viva Joseph is actually used emotion to ask help from the others? Yes. Okay, that, but then, okay, I would like to ask you. Did that in Viva use uh, pathos? Yes. Yes. But one another important question. Is it ethical? No. 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 So, yeah, <laughs> I'm not saying that. So can you see that it's it's a good thing? I mean, like, it's not it's not a good thing, but then it's a thing that very powerful that somebody can use pathos to persuade others to do something. Yes. But the question is, it is not ethical at all to do that. Okay. So as a conclusion, I would say that pathos is a very powerful tool that all of us can use in public speaking. Okay, but. We need to remember and we need to use pathos appropriately and ethically. Right? Because in public speaking, I believe that we need a balance of pathos, ethos, and logos. So I'd like to end my speech by a quote. We do not need another Barack Obama to influence the society. We do not need another Tun Mahade to persuade the citizen. We do not need another Martin Luther King to inspire the whole world. But what we need is, we need you. Thank you.